Hello, how are you all doing today? My name is Bernie Thompson and today we're here to take a look at this 2005 Mini Cooper S. This little Mini Cooper has been deemed unfixable. This vehicle has been trying to be repaired for over three years. Apparently, three years ago, there was water intrusion into the dash and the vehicle owner is an electrical engineer and he took it to a shop back east. They looked at it and they replaced the center dash and from the point they've, they've water intrusion and they put a dash in, none of the gauges have ever worked again. So he, the guy who owns the car, being an electrical engineer, figured he could figure out this out. And then he pulled the entire dash out of this car and looked for what else the water intrusion could have damaged. Because obviously it's not the center dash. So now he's put the whole dash back together and he drove the car for over three years with no dashes or working. He's now moved to Albuquerque, New Mexico. And in Albuquerque, we have an emission law. So this vehicle has to do emission testing. He took it to an emission station and they couldn't communicate with the, with the bus system so it won't pass the emissions. So he brought it to the shop here and this is a really good shop. And this shop has looked at it and they say the, dinner, the center dash was bad and so they put a brand new center dash in this vehicle and this dash is from Mini. Now apparently they had a hard time coding it. They couldn't use their BMW to get it coded. So they used a BMW engineering tool and they got it coded. So the new dash is in the car and it's coded, but it still won't work. So we need to figure out what's going on. Now right away, I haven't had a chance to look at a wiring diagram, nor have I looked at this vehicle, but I'm pretty sure we have two problems because on this car, OBD2 is not on a CAN bus, I don't think. I need to look at a wiring diagram, but we'll find that out together. We'll look at that and we'll figure it out. The CAN bus is, is one system and the OBD2 is a separate bus. So the first thing I want to do is I want to get a scan tool and I want to get the scan tool on this car and I want to go ahead and run all the codes. So let's get that scan tool set up. Okay guys, before we get started here, I'm going to have to know how the car is wired. Now here's the DLC connector and pins 6 and 14 have no wires, so the CAN bus does not go to the DLC. Now pin 7 is the one that's going to talk to the modules. That's this guy right here and we can see it splitting off and it's going to all the modules. Now that's going to either be a K-line or keyword protocol. And I would imagine on a car like this, 05, a lot of 05 and 06 BMWs and Minis use keyword protocol, not K lines. But we'll see when we get into the system to see what it comes up with. But what we're here to work on is right here. This, inst this instrument cluster here has the two CAN wires coming into it, and this is the center one, and it goes through the center dash, and it comes over to the cluster that's on top of the steering column. And this is, this is CAN right here, how it's going to be talking. And then we come down and we can see how this is split off. Okay, that's connected directly into the high-speed CAN, guys. Now, this is highly unusual. Almost no systems that I've worked on have an instrument cluster. The instrument cluster is on high speed. Usually these instrument clusters, they're on a mid-speed or a low-speed bus. They don't need to be on high-speed buses. And they can cause a lot of disruption to the high-speed communications. So most engineering teams do not put something that could be on a low-speed bus on a high-speed bus. But here we can see that we're in all these modules. This is a high-speed, very unusual, very, very unusual to have an instrument cluster on a high-speed communication bus. But that's what Mini's done on this car. So, okay, we got a better idea how it's wired so we know what we're dealing with. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and do an auto scan on this. We just wanna see what codes we're gonna bring up.
Okay guys, what I can see right now are most of these modules that we're coding are on the high speed bus. So rather than to get into all the nitty gritty of the DTCs, I want to get a scope and I want to just look at the bus. I want to see what this bus is doing. The shop is telling me that this can has all kinds of disruption on it. So let's take a look with a scope. Let's start there so we cut our time loss down. Now we can see the dash, it's running, there's no tack, all the lights are on. We can see the coolant sensor is pegged out, it's not getting data and all the lights are on over on the center dash. This is why we're here working on this vehicle. So now we're going to get that scope set up so we can try to figure out what's wrong with this CAN bus. Okay, I got the scope set up, let me show you my leads. I got the scope ground at the battery ground where it needs to be. Okay, can high and can low, I got into the steering angle sensor. It was the easiest place I could acquire to get into the can high and low. So that's where I'm going to get into the can high and low to start with. Okay, the scope is all connected, so let's check it. So my two leads, one and two, are connected. Now what I want to do is I want to change something over here. I want to go to just two channels, so we'll make the scope run faster. We're going to need to do that on bus systems. So this is my data. I'm connected. So now let's go ahead and get some data. I'm going to go to fast capture because I'll get quicker, cleaner data. Okay, wow. Okay, look at these downward strikes, guys. I can see the problem right away. See these downward strikes? And I've got a break right here. So let's come here and look at this guy right here. Okay, holy moly. The bus is flipping. Look at this. Do you see how I have red and I have yellow? But the main, the main is different. High should be in yellow and low should be in red. But right here, let's look at these. The bus flipped. I've got a, I've got a crazy problem going on here, guys. Let's look over here. I got another one right here. Do you see where the yellow is low and the red is high? It's inverted. And there's something else I can see. See this one and I can see this one right here. And do you see how that's a module that's not talking very much? You can see these packets are larger packets, and this is smaller, and it's not very often. Let's see how often. How often? Let's try to see if we can figure out how often that packet is talking. So my period is 15 milliseconds, it happened again. So here it inverted once and here, and this has got to be a module guys, one module is inverting the signal on the bus. That signal, something's wrong with the CAN transceiver, because the transceiver connection, the transceiver in these CAN bus systems is who handles the physical layer, it handles the, the wiring and the voltage, and that transceiver is flipping the message as we can see. Let's just go through here and see what we've got. What's up? You just gotta pull the tires off to do brakes. Can go ahead, do it. Okay. Yeah, do it. Just didn't want to take around. Sorry. No, that's fine. Just do it. Okay, here we have another inverted signal. So they're not very often. This module talks very little on the bus. It's not talking very much. Let's get more data here. Okay, again we can see that we got the module, one of the modules is flipping, and we can see that out of all these messages, there's only a few messages that have this problem. I'm going to let you get those tires off and then I'm going to continue. So let's go ahead and get some data. 
We're gonna use fast capture so we get a little bit clearer waveforms. Okay, so right away I have something going on. Look at these downward strikes that you can see in the waveform pattern clearly. So we wanna zoom in on that. Okay, now look at that. Do you see how that's inverted right there? Okay, so let's open this up some. Okay, so I have, I have, and look at this is red up here, and this is yellow down here. So I've got some craziness going on here. Okay, right here, look at this. This is flipped, because yellow is high and red is low. Here, red is high and yellow is low. So this is, this is totally flipped, and this is a CAN transceiver. The CAN transceivers in one of the modules is backwards. The transceiver is who handles the physical layer on the line, the voltages and so forth. And this one is, is definitely inverting the high and low waveforms. So right over here is what's happening, is it's talking, it's lost its clock too. Its clock is out. I know the clock is out because you can see it striking all over here. So let's, let's go in and zoom in on this a little bit further so we can see what's going on. See this wait period right here? See how there's a break? It's a wait and a break. These are each individual messages and then I have a break. And the way CAN works is I have to break right here. I have to have a time break, a lag. And when I have a lag right here, it's time and then the next module can talk. But I'm not, well, this clock is off because you can see where I didn't have the same weights over here. There's no weight and then I'm just talking. And it's talking right over the other message. This is why the gauges can't read, guys, because as soon as the other data is contaminated, CAN's job is to run a cyclic redundancy check, and if this is contaminated, none of these messages, none of this message isn't through here, got through, because those are contaminated. They will not pass the cycle redundancy check. Same as down here, these are contaminated. A module is talking over a ma another module, it's babbling. It's clear that this is just babbling. Let's go ahead and get some more data. That's crazy, guys. I've never seen this. This is really cool. Yeah, this is really different. I've never seen this. But we can clearly see that we're inverting, we're inverting some of these messages. See right here, this is red and this is yellow. That message is inverted. And I can see what's going on underneath here is also inverted. Shut that yellow off. See how the red is here and the yellow is here? That's talking, those two messages are, there's two modules talking on the bus at the same time right there. So all these, all these messages right here where these two modules are talking are corrupt. That means no messages get onto the bus. The CAN transceiver's job is to handle the physical layer here, but the CAN, the CAN module will handle that it won't allow this in because it won't, it'll run the cycle redundancy check and this will come up wrong because the message is contaminated. And we can clearly see that this is contaminated. We can clearly see that we have multiple modules talking at the same time. All of these messages here are thrown off the bus. None of those got through to any module. They're all thrown off the buses. So this has got some serious noise. But the noise is coming from one module. That's what I can see. So I can clearly see that right here, I can see that we have inverted waveforms where one of the CAN transceivers looks like it's wired backwards. You can see this guy right here. You see how that flipped right there? It should be yellow should be high and red should be low, but that's, that message is inverted. And right over here, it's talking on top of the other one. Okay, this is just, this is just garbage, guys. The, nothing's going to be able to talk on this bus from all this rubble. Some more data here. Again, we can clearly see where some of these messages are just flat inverted. We can see where this module, the transceiver is wired backwards. 
because you can't, even if you grounded the wires together, it cannot give you the signal. This is clearly the transceiver is in wrong. It's wired backwards. Again, the transceiver is backwards here. It's getting on the bus and it's doing the wrong thing. And it's creating havoc on this bus. And one of these modules is out of time too because it's talking over the other modules. So we have an issue. Now they said that this is all because of the center dash when it got water intrusion and they replaced the dash. So the first thing I want to do is I want to unplug that dash while we're watching the scope. So I'm going to put this right here. Here, this is just... Okay, now we can just see it happening live as we're running it. This is really cool, guys. See, that one's inverted. That one there is inverted. So every now and then, the messages is a smaller message and this module doesn't talk a whole lot. But right here, the module talked over the other module. So this is a module talking over another module right here. We can see that the module's just talking right over it. We can see these downward strikes here. And we can see the inversion. When it's going yellow in the bottom, that signal's inverted. And these are modules that are talking, and then this module is out of time, so it thinks it can talk. So it starts to communicate, and then it corrupts all these messages. So that's flat not going to work. So what I want to do now is I want to watch, we'll watch this as I unplug that dash. So now I'm going to unplug the dash. Okay, the dash is unplugged. Right now it's unplugged. There's no dash connected. And look at that, it fixed that problem. That problem is no longer present. So clearly we can see that those downward spikes are not occurring right now. So I'm gonna plug the dash back in again and we're gonna see what happens. And this is the center dash I'm connecting. Okay, it's back. We have a problem again. Definitely that bus has a problem and it looks like that dash is what's causing it. Clearly we can see those negative going yellow spikes, which is a problem. So we can stop the scope here and we can come in and we can zoom in on so we can look at it. We can see right here, we're right in the middle of that pack. It's, it's inverting it. Yellow should be high, red should be low. That bus is inverted right there. That message packet is, is incorrect. So that, and that hap, that's going away when we unplug the dash. Now let's look at something else. This dash has a through pass to get to the instrument cluster. So now what I want to do is I want to just unplug the instrument cluster and see what happens. Okay, so that's just the instrument cluster unplugged. Look at how bad that got. Guys, that got worse. Now it's really bad, so let's take a look at that. Let's see what's going on. Okay, now we have way more messaging going on from the dash. So what's happening here? Do you see all these inverted packets? I unplugged the instrument cluster and it got worse because now the center dash is calling out to the instrument cluster and it's asking are you there are you there are you there so it's doing more data transmissions 
That's what's happening here, guys. This is just, we started to have more data transmissions because that, the, the center dash can't see the instrument cluster. So he's calling out asking for it and it looks like it got worse. But this problem just shows me that the inverted transceiver is in the center dash. And they already think the center dash is the problem, but this is a brand new dash from Mini that's been put in the car. The coding has been put into it. But we have a problem for sure. We can see that here. So now I'm gonna plug the center dash back in. Okay, now the instrument cluster is plugged back into the center dash and look at how much better it got. Now I wanna unplug just the dash itself, which is going to unplug the main dash and the instrument cluster, both go off there. And look at how good it got. It's, it totally is fixed. I'm going to plug back in. The, the center dash is now plugged back in. And we can see that we still have that disruption there. We have that transceiver in that center dash is wired backwards. There's something wrong with that new dash. And here we can see where the, we got the we got multiple modules talking at the same time here. And we've got the same thing here. See it's talking and then it inverts and I didn't have the wait space here. So this is disrupting the timing of this bus as well. The timing is disrupted. I can see that from these little packages right here. So now I want to try something else. I'm going to we're going to record this and I'm going to shut the key off. So this module goes down. So let me shut that key off. Okay, the key is off. Now the problem was way less frequent. We can see that we just have a few strikes. Let's take a look at one of these strikes that we've got going down and see what's going on. Okay, look at that. When it inverted, I had a big space happen because the timing's off, so it doesn't know what to do. So the rest of the bus shuts off because this is wrong and it knows it. So then it waits and it's waiting for it to clear up again. So let's go ahead and... Again, we can see that we have a disruption, but it's less because it's, it's not on... It's not talking as much once the key is off. It's not trying to communicate as many times. Every time you see a downward strike, that center dash is trying to talk. Now with the key off, let me go unplug that dash. Okay, that dash is unplugged now. Center dash is totally unplugged. Okay, so let's take a look at something that I want to show you. Let's stop the strain. Now do you see how every time that we have a pause, we have a window where we have the, these pause breaks? You have to have a pause on a CAN bus before you start talking. If it comes on too fast before the, the break, it, that's just going to talk over it. Like when we see before, we don't have these kind of, we, we don't have any kind of break. Now, I want to do something else here. So we're going to go over to the dual scope, and I'm going to let this scope run on strip chart and I'm going to trigger on 
channel one, but on the lower level. And this, so now the only time that this one will come on is when it inverts itself. Let's turn off the red here. And let's go ahead, let, I'm gonna plug that dash back in and let's see what happens here. And again, you can see these breaks in between all of the, so as it's running past there, we can see those breaks. And we have to have a break before the next module gets on and talks. If we don't, we're gonna have disruption and we're gonna throw out those messages because that will disrupt the message to where the packet information will be failed, the cycle redundancy. The dash is plugged back in now. Okay, the only time that the lower one is gonna trip, is gonna trigger, is when we have a downward moving waveform. Let's move this guy down just a little bit more. So I set a trigger up on this scope, so we're triggering on, the, on a lower, on the channel one going low. So that means it inverted right there. Every time it goes down, it inverted. We have an inversion happen. This is the data stream up here. This is its inverting. We have two time bases, so I'm able to play games with the two time bases. It's just cool that you can see every time that we catch a window where we've got one going down, that we can stop the scope basically with a trigger and plot it out. And again, we can come back over here And we can get this data here and we can look at this. Let's get this, let's get our zoom window here. And we can see it inverted right here. And we can see that we have, that inversion is at the end, the other module is still talking. And then this one started to talk, it's out of time. There's no time here. And we can see right here, we didn't, we had a break, break, break. And here I didn't have a break, it just, this, it inverted and it came on and started to talk. Because it can't see the timing. The bus timing is off on this module. So it just starts to talk. And basically we can see that it inverted because the yellow is on low and the red is on high. But we can also see some yellow strikes up here, which means this module is still communicating. So this is very disruptive, but it's just a cool problem. I have never seen a problem like this. This is just bitching. This problem is just cool. Let me turn the key back on. The bus totally went to sleep when I shut the key off. Now we want it back on, so I want to hit the key on. That'll get the bus back up so we can look at some more data here. Here we see the downward going strikes. We'll go ahead and go back to dual scope. And we, again, every time this comes up on the lower screen, we have an inverted waveform. That basically shows the message, what messages are being sent by the center dash with the bad transceiver, because that new dash has a bad transceiver in it. That's what that's telling me. And if we want to do it this way, we can also go fast capture, get a little clearer data, and we can come in and look at these packets. See, that one's clearly inverted right there. But I had a good wait time. I'm not on top of anybody. It waited, so the timing is right right now, and then it sent that message. Here we've got another one that's inverted, and it didn't talk on anyone. It waited long enough. There was a good pause, and then it talked. See how all these have these pause breaks? These are different messages all, they're happening so fast it looks like one message, but they're, they're actually different messages going on right there.
Okay guys, now what we need to do is we need to check the wiring at the back of this dash and make sure the wires are correct. The shop has checked it and he assures me that they're right, but I need to double check it now. Because there's something wrong with the wiring or what's the way the dash is actually made. Because the CAN transceiver, even if you shorted the wires together, you couldn't make this waveform like this. So this is clearly one transceiver is going bad and when I unplug the center dash, it totally clears up. So that tells me that it has to be in the center dash. So let's go check the wiring now. Okay guys, I've got a wiring diagram up. Now right here, the computer data line, yellow brown goes to 13. Yellow brown goes to 13. And down here, yellow back, black goes to 26. So to show this on my film, because it's hard to do, I set up an IC camera. So right there you can see that the yellow brown goes to 13 and the yellow black is on 26 and that's on the connector and that's on the dash. Look down underneath there. Do you see how that's on the side there? The dash is marked and the connector are marked and the wires are in their right location. Now this is the second brand new dash that didn't work in this car guys and the CAN bus is definitely wired correctly on the dash and on the connector. Both all match the wiring diagram. But there is something wired incorrectly inside this dash. The CAN transceiver cannot be right, guys. It cannot be right. So I'm going to switch these wires in the connector and we're going to see what happens. Now I might have to rewire the two outputs that go to the instrument cluster, but I'm going to do that later. I want to just switch these wires first. So let me go ahead and switch those wires. So we're going to just switch those two wires right in the connector. So they're not going to match the numbers, but they'll match the way that CAN transceiver is wired inside this dash. Okay, so we've got the two wires swapped. So now I've got these I've got these wires swapped, so I want to show you with the borescope that they're they're swapped and now 26 now is yellow brown and 13 now is yellow black as we can clearly see. Okay, so now let's set the scope up and see what happens. This is great. I want to see what happens. This is really I can hardly wait to see what this is gonna do. This is Look at that guys, it's fixed. You see how all those downward strikes are not there? Wow. It's definitely fixed, guys. We have no inversion. Clearly we have no inverted signals. This is too cool. Holy shit. Okay, who would think that the dashes are wired wrong inside to the CAN transceiver, but we can clearly see the wiring is correct on the outside on the connector and the dash connection. But this is fixed now. Okay, so I've got a good looking bus now. My bus is good. I don't have the same problems. We can see that we don't have all the disruption. There's no disruption now in this bus.
I want you to see the difference. All that disruption that was there prior is not there now. I don't have the inversion signal, the inverted signals happening. This is just too cool. Holy shit, look at that. Okay, now the real question is, does the dash work or not now? That's the whole question. So the bus looks good now, does the dash work? Let's start this thing up and see if that dash is gonna work. Okay guys, now I'm reading the right temperature. Let's see if the dash is gonna work with the tack. Look at that guys, the tack is working. Oh my God, this is bitching. Look at that, the tack works. And the gauges are reading correct. Three years this car's been not working. And with a scope and a little knowledge, I fixed it. I haven't even put a part on this car and I fixed it. Is this customer gonna be excited or what? Their whole dash and the panel is all working now. Everything is functional. Just because I used a scope and a little bit of knowledge, it's amazing what you can do with a scope and some knowledge. Not one part was put on this car and I've got it fixed. This is too cool, guys. Okay, guys, I added another lead. So we want to go to four channels now. And on the green lead, Okay, now what I want to do is I want to do a quick erase. Now that's the K line I'm in now, or pin seven. That's why a scan tool could talk to this car even though the CAN bus was totally disrupted. Because it talks through a K line, not through the CAN channel. And we're erasing our faults. So let's go. Go to report. So the occupant sensor still has a problem, but we've cleared all the other codes that had to do with CAN buses. So we have something wrong with the passenger seat that they'll have to deal with, but all these other systems that had codes in them for CAN control are now fixed. So now I'm getting into the engine controller and I'm going to get some live data. So this is the scan tool talking through the K line to the engine control module. And if we stop that, we'll be able to zoom in on this and we'll see that there's there's a lot of data going across here. It looks like just a little, a little block, but we can see how much data is being transmitted in that package right there. But this is why I go to a lot of shops that have the CAN bus totally down and the car will not start and this, the scan tool talk to the car and it's giving them CAN codes, but they think the communications are good, but they're not. You've got to realize that you can have multiple ways to talk to the car with a scan tool. Look at a wiring diagram and figure out how it's wired. Figure out what kind of buses is on the car before you make decisions on what you think is wrong or not wrong, okay? Just interesting. Now, we still have to do one other thing. He said this car couldn't be emission tested. So I need to use a generic scan tool. I'm gonna to shut off my Atel and I'm gonna get a, 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 just a generic scanner and I'm gonna connect that generic scanner now and then we're gonna look at the data on that. So now we're gonna bring up a generic scan tool We're going to watch what happens.
Here it's pulsing the bus, but I have no answer. There's no answer right now from that module. When you get an answer, it'll be a real quick sequence of pulses. That's an answer right there. I don't think that's talking right now. So we still haven't communicated with that. So I want to try something. I want to shut the key off and watch the voltage. When I shut the key off, the voltage went to 12 volts rather than 5 volts with the key off. Now we're talking to the module. So now we have all the module data here. We were talking to it so it's functional. Here we can see we continue to talk to it. So we turn the key off to talk to the car. Is that crazy or what? No. That's BMW. That's a German engineering for you right here at its finest. The other thing I want to look at right here that's really interesting, look at the CAN bus message now. This is an accessory mode. Do you see how this is at 1.7 volts? It should be, if it was on, it would be at 2.5. That's the, the off time. And do you see how this is being pulled up? Both signals are being pulled up. This is a waveform you need to know. When, this, when the median voltage drops to 1.7 and I got a waveform like this, it's what I call accessory mode. But that means that the, the module we're looking at isn't on. There's no power on this. Now watch this. I'm going to show you. I'm going to turn the key on now. And now we communicated with that module with the OBD2 generic scan tool with the ignition off. It continues to talk to it with the ignition on. But do you see how now, let me shut this off. I want to show you this is really important. Do you see how I'm at 2.5 medium voltage? This is an accessory. This is active. So this is active mode. What we can watch is we can watch. I'm going to turn the key off and we're going to see that that will go into an accessory mode and you're looking at it and you see it go into accessory mode that means that the one of the modules or several modules aren't being powered I see this a lot on Chrysler cars when one of the fuses blows and there's a 5 amp fuse that blows on Chrysler and the only module I can talk to on the whole high speed network is the transmission controller I can't talk to anything else and I'll have this accessory mode and again, we're going to look at this accessory mode. Do you see how we're at 1.7 volts and both signals are being pulled up from that, from that median voltage? They're both being pulled up, but we're still at 2.5 where this is happening. This is what I refer to as accessory mode. Accessory mode means that I'm not powering the control unit. And once again, we're going to watch this when I turn it on and we can see we're talking to the OBD2 so we can return this car to the customer right now. This car is fixed. We'll be able to get the emission test done and the CAN bus as we can already see the dash works and all the codes are cleared. He, they're going to need to talk to the owner of this vehicle and see if he wants to fix the occupancy seat problem or not. I'm not here to look at that problem. I'm only here to look at the communication failures on this car. And I have fixed these communication failures on this car as we can clearly see. Let me turn that key on again and watch that signal. See how it become fully active out of an accessory mode? Very important to know a few waveforms. You just got to know a few CAN waveforms and you can fix these cars quite easily. This is an unfixable car, guys. It's not that hard. If you know, if you know a little bit of information on how these systems work, this just isn't that hard of a car. Okay guys, is that just a great diagnosis or what? Look at that CAN bus work. This car was unfixable. CAN bus has been down for over three years. The guy's an electrical engineer and there's no help. Car couldn't be fixed. But yet I fixed it with a scope and a little bit of knowledge. I did not put one part on this car and I fixed it. Now it's the coolest car I've seen in a long time. I've never seen a CAN transceiver put in where the high and low were crossed to the transceiver on the board. But clearly that's what's happened on this dash. You guys use a scope 
you too will have good troubleshooting in your base.